Welcome to week 7. This week we'll be talking about the second part of database design. Last week we had looked at an introduction to database design, introduction to entity relationship diagramming and so on. This week we'll go a little bit further. You're familiar with this diagram wherein I had shown the entire process of a web-based application. Now we have looked at the part where we access the database using SQL. We've learned the SQL language, which can extract pretty much anything we want from a relational database. But we've already discussed that the database itself is based on a design. Okay, and somebody, after talking to the concerned business people, created the database design based on which the actual database itself was created. In fact, this is a big challenge in this, uh, in the field of application development, where you're thrust into a business situation. You have to understand the business situation and then decide in what form you want to organize the tables. You, you have potentially infinite ways of organizing the tables, but you want to find the best way to organize the tables. And that in a sense is database design. And we are learning a systematic technique in this course, whereby you can take business requirements and translate them into a database design. That's the idea here. So clearly, this is the part we are looking at now, the database design part, where we look at what the business wants or we look at what the business is all about and then translate that understanding into a database design, which will then become an actual database that is created based on the design. That's what we are looking at in this part of the course. Okay, now just to quickly review what we looked at in the last class. Uh, we looked at, of course, cardinality notation, where we've got the first thing we're worried about is the degree of a relationship. And a relationship is something that connects two different entity types. And the degree could be a one-to-one -one relationship, where one instance of one entity type can be connected to one instance of the other entity type, or it could be one-to-many where one instance of one entity type is connected to many of the other, whereas uh, one of the other is only connected to one of the first. That's one to one, a one to n. And then of course you have a many to many relationship, which is uh, one of each can be connected to many of the other. So we saw that aspect of a relationship, the degree of a relationship. And then of course we looked at participation. That is in a relationship, whether a particular entity type has to participate, in other words, is compelled to participate, or participation is optional. So that is obligatory versus non-obligatory obligatory relationship, participation. And we saw that when it's obligatory, the half line next to the entity that must participate is solid. And when it's non-obligatory, the half line next to the entity that need not participate is a dashed line. And finally, we saw the notation for key migration. And this arises from the fact that in any one-to-many relationship, the primary key of the entity on the one side is always added as an attribute of, as a foreign key attribute of the entity on the many side. Okay. However, because of this implicit nature, we don't actually show it in our entity relationship diagrams to avoid clutter. Right. But what happens when the foreign key also happens to be part of the primary key? And we have seen examples of this. In this case, we show that this foreign key is actually part of the primary key by adding the key migration notation here, which is the vertical bar. And you can add it to one to one relationship, one to many relationship, anything. It's possible. OK, so we've looked at all of these aspects in the last class. Okay, so let's recap some of the basics. First of all, we saw that this is an entity relationship diagram. And in such a diagram, we've got entity types. We've got a relationship shown by means of lines. Then we've got a notation, special notation to indicate what is the primary key of an entity type. That's the hash sign. And then we've got the notation to use a star to indicate that a particular attribute is a required attribute. And we use the O to indicate an optional attribute. 
and we use the Crowfoot to indicate the many side of a one-to-many relationship and we use the solid line to indicate obligatory participation and the dashed line to indicate non-obligatory participation. As I just discussed, whenever there is a one-to-many relationship, as is the case in this example that is shown, every player can be a player on one team only at most, but a team can have many players. That's a one-to-many relationship. One team can have many players, but one player can only be on one team. That's a one-to-many relationship. And we've saw how in a one-to-many relationship, the way it's going to be represented in the form of tables looks like this. In other words, to indicate the team to which a player belongs, we add the team ID to the player table. That is what tells us for any given player, which team the player belongs to. So for example, this player belongs to the team Kings because the team ID is 200 and 200 is the team ID of the Kings team and so on. Now, the reason we add team ID to the player table and not add player ID to the team table, right? Assume, suppose we wanted to show the relationship by adding player ID to the team table, okay? We could do that, but only problem is every team has many players. And when you add player ID as a column, you'll be able to show only one player for a team, but then there are many players, right? That is why in a one-to-many relationship, we add the foreign key to the entity type on the many side, okay? Now, this is implicit in the sense that whenever you see a one-to-many relationship, you can always assume that the primary key of the entity on the one side is an attribute of the entity on the many side. You can just assume that. Because it's implicit, we do not show that attribute in the entity type. Notice that team ID is not shown as an attribute in the player table, player entity type, whereas it's actually an attribute in the player table. It's a column in the player table. We don't show it because we want to avoid clutter. We want to avoid redundancy. Okay, so in that sense, whenever you see a one-to-many relationship, the primary key of the entity on the one side is always an attribute of the entity type on the many side. It will not be shown, but it is always an attribute. It's implicit. We don't show it. Okay, so that's what we know is called as a foreign key. Okay, so here the foreign key is team ID and it is in the player table. It's called a foreign key because it's not the primary key of this table, but it's a primary key of some other table, a foreign table. Okay, so that's that's really what you're seeing here. So that's what I've said here. In a one-to-one, one-to-many relationship, primary key of the entity type on the one side is implicitly a foreign key attribute of the entity on the N side of it. So it's not shown. Okay, now what we'll do is, uh, I've given you instructions on Blackboard to install a product, the Oracle uh, design uh, data manager, and uh, that can be used to draw entity relationship diagram uh, diagrams. And what I'd like to do is to show you a very quick demo of how to draw entity relationship diagram using the Oracle uh, data manager data modeler. 